It's so sweet to be here this morning. Yeah. God allowed us to preach to be here this morning. Yeah. And since he did, we ought to stand and praise God. Don't no praise man, praise God, because God has all for us. And today, we are given with a heart of joy. And that's the thing that makes it so good. We're not doing it grudgingly. When you give grudgingly, it doesn't help nobody but you. And it doesn't even help you. Our scripture this morning said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a fight unto my path, a light unto my path. I have sworn, and I will perform it, that I will keep thy righteousness, judgment. May we pray. Almighty and all wise God, we come this morning asking God, please forgive us for the things that we've done that we shouldn't have done. The places we went to that we shouldn't have went to. God, we realize that we have sinned. We ask for forgiveness. And not only, God, we ask for your guidance, your direction, the way that you would have us to go. And on this morning, God, as we come to make someone happy or someone's happy, God, we ask that you would join in and that, that they will be the most happy they have had in, in their life. God, with you there, we know that everything would be good. And God, as we go through this service today, we ask that the word, would not only come by our ears, but be stuck in our ears that we be able yes, to live on each and every day. God, we ask you to go with us, lead us, guide us, direct us along the way. And when we get too hard in, God, bring us down to where we ought to be yes. and do what we ought to do for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen.
before you uh, again on this homecoming day to share a bit of the Olive Grove Baptist Church history with you. History of Olive Grove Missionary Baptist Church, October the 10th, 1865. It has been said that Olive Grove was started on October 10, 1865 by Reverend Elsie Ragland, a white minister from upstate New York or Pennsylvania, who borrowed five members from White Rock Baptist Church in Berea, North Carolina to start our seat here. It is with their support and assistance that we became the Olive Grove Baptist Church, starting out in a log hut with two window boards hung with leather for hinges. Reverend Raglan was, devo was devoted to teaching blacks about the Lord, and you could say that he was integrating the South with much opposition from the white community. Nevertheless, he did what he was led to do with the help of the Lord. We have been told that his body is resting in our church cemetery. This church is an, affiliated, is an affiliate of, of East Cedar Grove Association, along with approximately 41 other churches, located in Granville, Durham, Person, and other counties. Through the years, we have had over 15 pastors. Our former pastor emeritus, Reverend Mac Timberlake Sr., pastored for over 46 years. And our succeeding pastor, Reverend Johnny M. White Sr., has been serving along with his wife, Reverend Melcina y. White, for six years next month. We thank God as we today celebrate 158 years of service to God, this church body, and the community. Thanks to our history and our future. Welcome home. Amen. When Jesus comes, everything is going to be all right.
you want. You can feel like you want to feel. But God has been here 158 years. Yeah. 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 All right. And the church is still going on. Yeah. All right. Preachers yeah. have come and go. Pastors have came and went. Yeah. And so shall I. Yeah. But what God has purposed shall yeah. come to fruition. Yeah. I expect that this church will be here when Jesus cracked the sky. Yeah. And the dead shall rise as the word sees. Yeah. And then those that are alive shall be caught up with him. God has been a good God. I don't care how. I put you to live with God has been good. But there is a word from the Lord. We thank God for our praise team on today. Sister Timberlake, uh, Minister Timberlake, with Evangelist Timberlake, we thank God for her being here on today. We thank God for our praise team, assisting her, and our drum James assisting our praise team. Um, God is a wondrous God. Amen. He's wonderful, and He does things sometimes unbeknownst to us. Amen. So we use that as a subject this morning in the form of a question. It could be uh, 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 direction on this morning. What to do with things at home? Mm -hmm. What to do with things at home? And we'll be coming out of John, the 11, St. John, the 11th chapter, verses 33 through 44. We're going to try to shoot on down there and get you on the body here. God has been good. And in 44 verse, we take as our text, and he said, And he that was dead came forth, bound hands and foot with grave cloth. And his face was bound about with a nap. And Jesus said unto them, Loose him. Let him go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's John 11, 33 through 44. Yes, sir. Take John 11, 33 through 44. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for all that was said and done thus far. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy to allow this church to see another yes. year. Father, we ask the Lord a special blessing over the hearers of your word, Lord, that they be not hearers only, but doers of your word also. Father, we ask the Lord that there be anything inside of me, we ask the Lord that you take it out right now, Lord. Yes. Have your way, Lord, that they hear not the thoughts of my thoughts, or, or, but your thoughts, Lord. Yes. Proceed, Lord, to shine your light, Lord, that they might find a direction from the crossroads of life. Yes. Forgive us of all our sins and unrighteousness yes. that we be able, Lord, to hear with a clean heart and clean mind. Yes, yes. In Jesus' name we do pray. Yes. Amen. 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 My brothers and sisters, sometimes do you ever wonder what happened? What in the world happened at home? Mm. When I was a little boy, we used to have what we call homecoming and we had the cooking and we didn't have all the fine uh, uh, pianos and, and organs and we didn't have the carpet on the floor, but we simply ate outside. You know, they brought, everybody brought food, and we ate outside. And as I got a little older, and I began to uh, uh, wander off from my home church, and I come out here, I uh, saw that you, you had homecoming. The church was full. The back was full. Didn't even have room to stand on homecoming Sunday. Homecoming Mother's Day and Easter was the big Sunday. Come on, Pastor. Amen. But every other Sunday is just like this. Amen. <laughs> tell it, Pastor. Tell it. You can find yourself. Tell it. Come on. But we, what, have you ever wondered what happened at home? I'm going to use and try to symbolize uh, about John's, about uh, Lazarus' life and Jesus and uh, how he was uh, commanded to come and what he did. I also use uh, the sister. As they was weeping, uh, to, to use that in my subject, what to do with things at home. Amen. Maybe your home ain't crumbling down, or maybe your roof ain't leaking. Come on now, Pastor. Uh, maybe you don't need no mortar where the bricks are. Or maybe you don't, your driveway haven't cracked Come yet. On, Come on, man. Uh, maybe you can't see the sunlight through the little crack in the wall. You know? Maybe. Maybe the wind, when the wind blows, you don't see the, the, the rug lift up yeah, like it used to. Yeah, uh, we all are living in better and finer homes now than we used to live in. Uh, I've often told the story of how the chickens would run up under the house and you can see them. You can see them running up under the house in the house that we grew up, that I was born at. 
uh, uh, you, when the wind blow, you can see the rug float up a little bit. We had plastic over the window stay year round, seems like. Uh, we didn't have a, 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 a window shield. We had cardboard cut and one inch strips, and we took little nails and nailed the plastic. We want fancy. But we had love at the house. And every night we sat down around the table and everybody came. Oh, we had a rooming house. We had some men that stayed upstairs and they paid to stay upstairs. But when it was time to eat, everybody washed their hands and came and sat around the table. And we all, we didn't have a whole lot of food, but we had maybe one chicken. <laughs> and some gravy. Uh, and what you call the biscuits. They were hard too, but they felt good in the grave. Uh, sometimes we had a little side meat. Sometimes we had a little fat back, and so other times we had some cabbage with it. Uh, and all of us sat around and sucked gravy and eat cabbage. With it. Eating with chicken. I, of course, had the back, because everybody else had the best pieces, you know. But I began to enjoy the back. A little beat on the back. We had love at the house. Everybody was going and helping one another cut wood. And everybody was, when somebody got sick, somebody went over and cleaned the people's houses. And we loved on one another. We didn't have no oil. All you had to do go next door. You got some oil. You need some sugar. I'm not talking about the, the kisses. I'm talking about some real sugar. Make the too late with it. Sometimes when you went to the store, we had an old store in, uh, on Pettigrew Street called Food Fair. And we would go up there and they had what they called credit. He would give you credit. Sometimes when you were up there, you didn't have money. Your parents would see you up there and they would give you credit. I don't get what you want. You know, back then, you could get a chicken and a soda and a cabbage for less than a dollar. Amen. Amen. And everybody was happy with it. Mm -hmm. Now everybody eating from different places. Ain't nobody sitting at the table no more. Yeah. Well, what do you do with things at home? Right. Everybody sit at the table, then they got the cell phones out. Oh, come on now, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> Ain't nobody talking to me. I'm not going to use correct English this morning, y'all. I will come on. Talking to one another, everybody on the cell phone. If you want me to know something, then you have a nerve to text me and I'm sitting right across from you. <laughs> Not that makes me so mad, I walk by my daughters or my children, and then I, I, I go in the bedroom, shut the door, and then they text me, hey, man. <laughs> Come on. What you do with things at home? When mama fixed a meal, well, I don't care what it was, Friday night was hot dogs and french fries. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Or yes, sir. Oh, fish. Yes, sir. Amen. Thursday night was soup. Come on. Come on. And the soup had everything from Sunday all the way down to Thursday. <laughs> Uh, 
Well, maybe I go back to the floor and where the Gucci mamas are all on the side. You all know that weird, don't you? Somebody's always doing something. You know, we used to call our young girls forward. All right. But all the old people that remember what that means, that means they were a little fast. Amen. And we had some forward little boys, too. They were fast, too. Amen. So what do we do with things at home? I'm here this with today to let you know what do we do with things at home. We find ourselves where well, Jesus was commissioned to come because his friend, his, his brethren was sick and one that he loved so much of, uh, which named Lazarus. And, and, and because of the way Jesus took his time, and because he took his time, Lazarus died. And we find out in, in chapter 11 that, 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 that when Lazarus died and Jesus was on the way, they saw him coming. Amen. And they began to get angry and the Jews began to say, it had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Amen. Beginning to blame Jesus for what's going on at home. He had nothing to do with Lazarus dying. But they knew if he had been here, he wouldn't have died. Not knowing that Jesus had to suffer through this thing. Because whether he was at the house or not, because there was a man that came and said, just say the word. And the servant was healed. So what do you do with things at home? So we pick it up in verse 33 uh, in, in St. John 11. It says, when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in his spirit and was troubled, mm -hmm. and said, Where have he laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Mm -hmm. Jesus wept. Mm -hmm. Ah, Jesus didn't weep mm -hmm. because he was dead. Oh, come on. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the yes, life. Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He wasn't weeping because. Lazarus had died in the natural. He was weeping because of where their faith was. Yeah. What do you do with things at home when faith is gone? Ah, oh, you got to go get Jesus. Ah, yeah. oh, don't think about calling me before you get Jesus. You better call on Jesus first. When things ain't going right at home with your children, with your loved ones, or somebody's sick, or somebody's on the verge of dying, don't call the pastor first. You better call Ain't shaking, ain't rocking, ain't 
had to feed, they ain't nothing. Only thing they waiting on, cause they looking at their watch. I know I got you, cause I'm staying up here a little bit long now. Can't wait to get out, because I done done my duty by going to church. God don't care whether you come in here or not. God wants your soul. He don't want you. No body. He wants your soul to be connected with. He don't care nothing about you don't put a few dollars in the plate. You might as well take it on back home because you're going to be calling somebody for it on tomorrow. I do a tight when it's right. God wants you. He wants your whole mind, body, and soul. He don't want a piece of you. He want all of you. He said, well, I just give him a little bit now, and I give him a little bit later. God don't want it like that. God want the whole person. He want all of you. Let me tell you something. When I wake up in the morning, my hair all messed up. Slaw up right out there in here sometimes. Y'all, y'all might have come over here. Huh? Grab snake. All right. Huh? Ain't got no clothes on. God still won't. Huh? He don't care nothing about no rouge and no lipstick on your face. He don't care nothing about you don't put that little eyeliner on you. What that was? Come on. Eyeliner on you. He don't care nothing about the color in your hair. He knew you for your hand in the hair. He knew you for your, for your head was even formed. He knew you in your mother's womb, in other words. He knew you when you was inside your dad. He knew what was going to happen. You, got to, you must understand something about God. He don't want no fictitious believers. He want the whole believer. He want the whole mind, body, and soul. He don't care nothing about you out there doing what you're doing. He don't care. He wants you the good, the bad, and the ugly. All of us got some ugly inside of us. God wants us the way we are. He didn't tell the disciples, go and fix nothing at home. He said, come and follow me. The drunkard had to get up and follow him. The whoremonger had to get up and follow him. The adulterer had to get up and follow him. The one that loved money had to get up and follow him. He didn't give him time to clean nothing up. He chose them the way they were. And he wants you the way you are. And then he began to reform you. Except he be born again. He don't care about the way you were. He gonna make you fit for the kingdom. That's when I I get excited. Yeah. I didn't come from a long lineage of preachers. Well, I didn't come from a long lineage. We had some people that was highly educated in the well, family. Well, I came from people that was in the street. Uh -huh. They had several different wives. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If I could tell you, but I ain't cool. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can tell you some things that blow your mind about my people. Well, I can tell you some things to make you grin about myself. Yeah. All right. Uh, the trouble that I gave the Lord. Yeah. All right. But God took me. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Forgave me. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. The way I would. Yes, sir. Yeah. He called me about the street. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. He called me from the drugs and alcohol. Yes, sir. Uh, he called me from, from the clubhouses. He called me and he said, listen here, I got a job for you. I said, no, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> Come on, man. He said, I still got a job for you. Right. Whether, whether you want to acknowledge or not, I got a job for you. And he started putting things in place. Come on, so man. I couldn't go Come on, and do the things I Come used on, to man. do. He gave me my wife. Come on, man. He made us together. We 40 miles separate from each other. 40, 40, 50 miles separate from each other. Couldn't even see each other in the daytime. We had to write what they call. I know y'all don't remember. Letters. <laughs> <laughs> we had to take a phone with the long cord on it. Uh, my mom went about the cord with 25 foot on there. Go down the hall 
over here talking to Randy Corner. Yeah. She got tired of me talking yeah. on the phone. She could hang it up. Yes, But God wanted me. Yeah. Uh, we used to play ball in the in the nighttime when the when the heat went on us. We play basketball for cases of beer. Yes, yes. All might well come on, baby, y'all ain't yes, got to see that. Yeah. And, and and somebody will always get mad and get to fight. Amen. And who won't fight got to be a run. <laughs> but God wanted me. Yeah. God saw my wrongness. That's right. Come on. And once he started dealing with me, yeah. Yeah. I'm still at what you do with things at home. Yes. Yeah. What you do with things at home if I don't get a chance to tell you beyond here is you give it to God. Yeah. You run and find Jesus. And you let him in. And he'll fix everything that's wrong with you. Yes, if you're waiting to give your life to Christ, to get right first, Amen. you'll never make it in. Because I tell you, every time I thought I don't, I don't overcome something, God showed me something else. <laughs> he showed me something else. But he wants me. Yeah. And I tell you something else. How do y'all sit in that back row back there? I see you. God wants you to. Amen. You can dip and hide and slide and glide in the nighttime and the daytime. Oh, no, no. Dip and slide and hide. God still sees you. There's no way you can run and hide from God. You, your, your, your legs ain't long enough to run from God. He, you running, you running, and He with you all the time. So they saw, Jesus saw them, and they was weeping, and, 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 and it said the Jews was with them, and not only were they with them, they were helping them mourn their loved one, mm -hmm. and, and, and they loved him, and so Jesus wept, and so then the crowd of Jews said, behold how he loved him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus must have been putting it on, but he wasn't weeping for Lazarus. Mm -hmm. Amen. He was a remedy for Lazarus. And so, and then it says, some of them said, could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? Mm -hmm. Jesus therefore again groaned in himself, coming to the grave. It was the, it was a cave and a stone was laid upon him. Mm -hmm. I want y'all to pay so close attention how they would begin to blame Jesus if he had not came. You know how folks do. If you have a been here, if you if you had a done this when I was growing up, or if you had a been a better husband, Rich. Come on. Yeah. if you had a been a better wife, well. you know how we lay it on folks and make folks feel. If y'all would have sung better this morning, yes, sir. Yes, sir. somebody might have would have shouted. Yes, but because they didn't shout loud and sing right. You know how it is. If y'all would have gave the money, we might would have had some eating here. <laughs> Tell it, Pastor. Tell it, Pastor. If the pastor was any good, he would have made preparations early. Amen. <laughs> you know how we give all these excuses and blame everybody else for the situations in our lives, the situation that I had at our home, simply because. We didn't keep Jesus there like we supposed to. We found a friend of all the fuss and they trust him and they ain't gonna get you. It's too late. We, we must understand that Jesus came there. He said, look here, take me where he died. And so the 39 verse it says, Jesus said, take away the stone. I know they thought he was crazy. Didn't they? Mm -hmm. Take away the stone. Man don't lie here. He's thinking now. Mm -hmm. right. That means the situation is beyond his control. Right. So the Jews stopped. But they were continually blaming him. If he had a video, he wouldn't have died. Mm -hmm. It don't matter what time Jesus comes. Hallelujah. But when he comes, yes, everything yes, will be all right. Yes, Y'all ain't 
never been in that. Ain't never did that. Come on now, Pastor. Ain't never thought that. Come on, Pastor. Huh? Ain't never walked the wrong way. Huh? Ain't never talked the wrong way. Yes, sir. Ain't never looked the wrong way. Have you ever put on the wrong dress or the wrong suit? So Jesus said, roll the raise it down. Take away the stone. You let this here now. He said, Martha, the sister of him that was dead. Yes. Said unto him, y'all listen to this now. Come on, y'all, y'all listen. To this. this is this is modern speaking here. This is reality speaking here. And for those that are stuck in our general reality and not knowing that God is not also God is in our reality, but He He's in His own reality. He can do the things that we can't even fathom. Martha, the sister of Him that was dead, said unto Him, Lord. By this time he's thinking. Mm-hmm. For he has seen he had been dead for four days. Mm-hmm. And you tell us to roll away the stone. <laughs> and Jesus said unto her, uh-huh. I said, I not unto thee. Yes, sir. That thou wouldest believe. Yes, sir. Thou should see. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Let me take my time. Yes, sir. Uh, I know I don't been too long. Hey, birthday. <laughs> we are uh, we 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 have a current situation. And I said we, I'm not talking about me and my wife, I'm talking about all of us. All right, all right. We have a current situation of 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 prioritizing what God will and cannot do. Um, when he should come and when he should not come. Um, I remember in the Old Testament, God asked the prophet, there was some old soldiers laying on the ground, it was old dry bones. He said, Can I make it these bones? And the prophet was smart enough. Not to tell him what he could or couldn't do. He said, only thou was know us. Yeah. See, 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 when you when you give God his place, his supremacy in all the universe. Ah, uh, when the Bible said when the earth was void and without form, God flew upon the water. And he said, Let there be light, and there was light. Before there was dry land, God created the land. And all the creeping things, the little birds won't even chirp, and yet God made the little birds chirp, and he created the fields of the earth. Then he looked down and he took some dirt, some sand, and he created man. And the word said, from the ashes shall we we return to the ashes, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. So it don't make no God. No different, makes God no different. What situation or your current, you know how they say it on Facebook, my current situation, and they show a brand new, what they call a whip. They show that new car, and they said, my, or they got a, a beautiful woman, they said, my current situation. It, it don't matter what your current situation is. I know a God that can take whatever situation you in and flip it upside down and make it to his will and according to his way and you stand on the top of life. I got one of these I'm going to go back y'all. <laughs> See, I've experienced some things in life. Haven't been in the grave, but I've had the doctors to run and walk away, saying ain't nothing we can do. One place they told me said you're gonna have to go to the hospital. I said I ain't going to the hospital. I'm going to the clinic. And they brought the little pill in there, the nitroglycerin pill, the little pink one first, and then things won't look it right, so they come back in and brought me a little little white pill. I don't know what that was. Come back in about five minutes later and said, Mr. White, you're going to have to go to the doctor. I said, I ain't going to no doctor. You know how hard-headed we've been. 
They said, well, Mr. White, I said, just give me something for my sign. Is that what I come in here for? Where y'all go? They said, well, Mr. White, for you to go home, you got to sign. I said, where the paper is? I signed the paper and went on home not knowing that I was beyond stroke range. Right, come on. I'm over in the 250 range. The top line, bottom line, after two nights with glisten pill, come down to 127. God take care of babies and foods. That's what the old folks used to say. I don't know what the what the reading was before they gave me the nitroglycerin pill, but it was 245 over 127 after they gave me the two nitroglycerin pills. And I went on home. Got on the phone with my wife. I'm talking on the phone with her. Next thing I know, she's coming in the door. I'm like, how you get from Duke? I done passed out. Still wouldn't go to the hospital room. No. She said, well, come the weekend, you're going Monday, you're going to the doctor Monday. I said, well, I went to the doctor, and the doctor told me, said, they never wrote down what the real readings was on you, um, but you was in the stroke, you were way up in the stroke range uh, uh, when they gave you the two pills. She said, I don't know why they didn't even try what it was. She said, Mr. White, you could have had a stroke, had a heart attack, and massive died right then. She said, I'm going to give you these water pills and these. I said, give them to me. I went home and threw them behind the bed. <laughs> I know a God yeah. that can work even in fools. Yeah. Now I'm taking my medicine like I supposed to. Yeah. I know a God that said, roll over, Jesus said, roll away the stone. It's my Lord and Savior here. He's a man. Come on. Huh? Came from his mother's womb by way of heaven. He's a throw away the stone. He weak, crying. And who would have had love him? He must have loved him. One saying, he's thinking, now what he wants is to roll away the stone. Listen here. This is what he said. He said, Then they took away the stone from that place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes. Y'all listen to this now. Y'all listen. Say it, Father. Huh? Yeah. This is what you do at home, right? Come on. Now, y'all don't do this at home. When, when, when something dead at the house, something done died, you know, the children ain't acting right, the husband and wife ain't acting right, the dog barking, they trying to bite you, everything acting up, the lights been cut off, water, you ain't got no water. When something done died, this is what Jesus did. Said, so he said, Father, I think thee that thou hast heard me. Amen. <laughs> See, while he was weeping, he was talking to the Father. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> See, while you crying about your current situation, yeah. about that which has oppressed you and depressed you, you need to be talking to the Father. And he said, I thank you that thou hast heard me. He knew the Father had heard him. He had faith. He knew it because the Father had sent him to do so. You need to know what God has sent you to do. He didn't send you to be in doubt. He didn't send you in unbelief. He didn't send you to
Things fall apart when they go to praying. Yeah, then uh, they go out to eat. They go somewhere. <laughs> you see, your prayers hold weight. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Huh? Amen. When I, I've been in a situation where boys would be out to me. See, I didn't have no brothers and sisters. I was the only one, so I either had to fight my way out or run out. Every now and then, somebody would say, hey, y'all ain't gonna do nothing to John, and he with me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. See, because I had somebody on my side. Amen. I want you to know at this homecoming that you got somebody on your side. Amen. You ain't by yourself. Amen. I don't care what you don't do. I don't care what you're doing. God is on your side. He don't like what you're doing, but he wants you. He's fighting battles and putting out fires before they even start. All you got to do is start listening to him. Start obeying. Start, start meditating on his word. Start praising him in spite of what you see. We move on, then we'll close. It says, so he took away the stone. And Jesus, he didn't already proclaim that he knew the Father had heard him. He talked to, to the Father. And then he said, and I knew that thou hearest me always because of the people which stand by and see. I see it that they may believe yes, sir. that thou yes, sir. Yes, sir. has yes, sir. sent me. Olive I want you to know today that, that God has sent me here. He ordained for me to be in this place. I didn't know nobody here. I didn't even know Olive Grove existed. He hooked me and my wife up. And my wife introduced me to this church. I was out there in the street playing for beer, smoking a little weed here and there, chasing the great church skirt tails. But God said, I want you. God sent. God sent Jesus. So he had the faith to tell them to roll away the stone. See, because he was getting ready to do some work. Yes, sir. Y'all ready to do some work? Amen. You got to be willing to work for God. Yes, sir. That means you got to learn how to take some stuff. Sometimes people cuss me out. And I have to take it. In my mind, mm, I ain't praying. But I take it and walk away. My wife had to hear it sometimes. Because mm, I don't be praying. But I had to learn how to pray in the midst of adversity, in the midst of the stone being rolled over me. And I'm in the cave, and folks think that I'm dead. I'm not dead. I'm just resting my eyes to Jesus come back. This is what you do at home. You give it to God and allow Jesus to work it out for you. In my closing, the Bible says that they rolled away the stone. <laughs> Jesus was talking all out there, rolling the rage stone. He talking to the crowd. I can see the crowd over there listening. They listen. They say, "This man crazy." And he was rolling the rage stone for what? That man in that stink. Yeah, he, he he ain't gonna do nothing. They never seen nothing like this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I, that's another word right there for y'all. Y'all ain't never seen nothing that God that God is gonna do in your life. You ain't never seen nothing like what He's gonna do in your life. You've you been looking at other folks like God got a miracle in your life that, that he has prepared for you that you haven't even seen yet. You ain't seen God work yet. He's going to work a miracle out for you. I just believe that because I don't see some stuff. I've seen him work some miracles in my life. I've seen it. I've seen it 
on the job on construction field. I seen it in the manufacturing job. I seen it out there in the field, plying the field with the horse and the mule. I seen it. I seen God work some miracles, put me in a place to where I am not even educated to be. I'm a well. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I seen God work the miracles. I seen him take the drink out of my hand. I seen him take the marijuana out of my hand. I seen him take the wandering eyes and set them straight. Y'all know what the wonder. So Jesus told, roll away the stone. And he rolled away the stone. And he didn't just think get out there and say, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What you do with things at home, 
You give it to God. Amen. Give it to God. Uh -huh. Whatever your ailment is, give it to God. Amen. Whatever your problem is, Amen. give it to God. Amen. Whatever your situation, uh -huh. give it to God. Amen. You can't keep yourself, give yourself to God. Amen. Your mind won't think right, give it to God. And get in somebody's church. See, I'm going to share a secret with you. Go home and read Revelation 3. See, God is coming for us. Church without spot or wrinkle. He's not talking about the building. But you're going to have to get under somebody. He's talking about the church as you. But you're going to have to get in a building somewhere to learn about you. That's what you do with it at, at home. Work on you first. And give everything else to go. Is there one that needs prayer? I'm going to ask that you come in this time. We'll stand and we'll sing for you.